ya no duele porque al fin ya te encontré hoy te miro y siento mil cosas Hi, this is my first cooking blog and we're going to learn how to make cocretas not the typical chicken but a fish using cod first we use a pound and a half to approximately two pounds of codfish fresh we cook it up by making some stock. We're going to use some fish stock. And we'll, so this is what we do. We cut up the fish. We saute some onions, garlic, and some carrots with a package of some Goya seasoning and the fish. And we put it in the pot. And then we add the water. So first saute your onions, your garlic, and your carrots with fish. And then put in at least four cups of water. Let it sit and simmer and then we'll do the next step. When you see your broth get nice and foamy, you're gonna cook for approximately 20 to 30 minutes. And you'll have a nice stock for making rice or soups, and then we'll show you what to do with the fish once it's cooled down. And this is how your fish will look drained. Your broth for your soups or rices, and your fish drained. Once you have separated and drained your fish from the stock you've made, you will now shred up the fish. You should always shred up by hand and make small pieces. Four cups of shredded fish. If you wanted to do chicken cocretas, we will also be doing a video on that. We would want four cups of cooked of course, when you separate the fish from your stock, we have discarded the onion piece and the carrots. The onions and the carrots were to give seasoning to the fish, except for this little onion that got escaped, and to the stock. The garlic that we put in uh, we is obviously mixed in here with the fish, and that'll be great seasoning as well. Of course, we will be adding more salt. We use kosher salt a lot. Gives better flavor, makes things less salty than regular regular table salt. And there you have it. Nice shredded, nice shredded cod fish. You can make make a mix of cod and hake or any other type of white fish. Once this is done, we heat up our pan, the 12 inch pan with olive oil and some grapeseed oil. The reason why I mix my olive oil with a little bit of another oil so it doesn't burn. When you're cutting up an onion, take off the extra shell, this paper-like shell, but keep the ends that you've cut off. I freeze them and I always have them in the freezer for when I have to do my stocks. Just cut in the center, and then cut vertically. This will help. There we go. Lost my own technique at the beginning there. As long as I don't lose my fingers. I've done that. In. This will take approximately some five minutes. Get this nice and heated and softened up. While that's happening, you're going to prepare a cookie pan with tin foil and some wax paper. For when you are done making the cocreta dough, if you want to call it that, the masa, the cocreta masa, as they say in Spanish, we're going to put it on here, and this is where our masa, our cocreta dough masa, will cool down. Kosher salt, and of course, some pepper. Black pepper is fine, not too much. And get that going, and then once that's softened up, we'll put the fish in. Our onions have been sautéing for a good five minutes. We got the nice and sizzly brown. We'll take a look at that. Okay. Got that going. 
Put in our fish. Now, since the fish has been cooked already, it's not like we're going to have to cook this for a long period of time. What we're doing here is seasoning it with the onion and salt. Put a little bit more of that in there. You're probably thinking, oh my God, a lot of salt. I think that when I'm watching people on the Food Network, I'm thinking, good Lord, that was a cloud of salt. How, that's not a little bit of salt. Anyway, so we'll put some salt and fold in the onion olive oil mixture so that the fish gets soaks up the nice juices probably thinking oh I'll never have time to do this we always have time to cook cook is something that brings people together when you're at a party where do you end up in the kitchen everyone likes going out to restaurants People always talk over some type of food or meal. And I think cooking from scratch does, it only takes the same amount of time than it does when you buy something and have to heat it up. And it's healthier for you to cook. Now what we're going to do now that we've incorporated the oil and the fish has soaked up the onion the oil. See, here we go. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to just put it in a pan while we get the part that this is needed is the masa. In order to make the dough part for your cocretas, usually requires some more olive oil. I love my little squirt ink water olive oil thing because then I know I'm putting in how many tablespoons. What you're going to put in is at least four good tablespoons, four to five good tablespoons of olive oil. Then what we're going to do to this olive oil is incorporate some flour. Usually the recipe calls for ten tablespoons. I give it a good, this could be a tablespoon, but ten scoops of flour and our olive oil. And your scoops are no more than this. They're not leveled. It's not 10 level tablespoons. Nothing like that. It's 10 tablespoons of flour. And when you put it in, you don't want to put it in all in the center. You're going to put your flour in a flour-like pattern with your olive oil. See how it's turning color? And you're going to Incorporate the flour with the olive oil. Get it nice and toasted up. Your, olive, your flour will start getting brown and toasted. While that's doing that, we're going to get two cups of milk. I don't use whole. Some people do some milk, some broth. You could have used some of that stock that we made. You can do half and half, half milk, half broth. I've always used skim milk two cups of skim milk. Now this is accurate. The 10 tablespoons aren't accurate. So you get the milk. The milk is right from the fridge. You don't want to put something cold directly into heat. So I usually heat it up for at least a good minute and 30 to get that cold out of there. You should always cook things at either room temperature. Comes out better doesn't cut the cooking. See here, the flour is brown and toasted. And we're going to put in the milk. Okay, now that your milk is warm, see it's not, but it's not hot. I can touch the glass still. It's warm. There's a little bit of steam, which is fine. And we put it in slowly, never from the center, around the edges better. And there we go. Now that that's cooking up and steaming up, what you're going to do is smooth out the flour. You want smooth, warmed up flour before you incorporate the fish or chicken, whichever of the two you have.
we're going to smooth this out. This will probably take a few minutes. You can see it starts bubbling up. If you start seeing bubbling up, lower the temperature a little bit. This has been cooking on a medium to medium high. But you're going to flatten out your flour because you want to make it look like porridge. Remember porridge? For those of you who had moms or grandmas making porridge for your, for your cereal when you were little kids, that's what this is going to look like nice flour milk porridge and we'll bring it to you so you can see it you see you still see some flour chunks in there but you keep on stirring of course we should do this over the heat medium high but note that flour so it looks like you want it to look like dough. Okay. You don't want lumpy flour. Or did you like? Yes, there are some lumps, but it's much smoother than what we started off with. And then we're going to incorporate the fish and onion mixture. Still over the heat, you're going to fold it in there so it looks like dough. It's very good. You should put a little bit more of salt because of the flour. What I do is I usually sprinkle it all over and coat your salt. Find kosher salt, sea salt, or nice finishing salts, savory salts, salts that add flavor but not the saltiness. This nice, shut it off. This is what your dough will look like. It's a flour fish mixture. I'm going to get our pan tin foil first, then wax paper. Why tin foil? Because even though you clean your pans, don't think your pan doesn't have a flavor and you don't want your cocretas later on tasting like a cocretas with sugar. Right. Tin foil first, then wax paper. You don't want your fish to take on the flavor of whatever you cooked on before the pan. I'm not saying you don't wash, but sometimes there's flavors that stay in pans. That happened to me once. Anyway, so you're going to do this. You're going to flatten it out on a 13, I think this is 13 by 9. I'm going to flatten this out nice and pretty. You don't want one side thicker than the other because then it's harder to cool. You are going to let this cool at the room temperature because right now it's steaming. And after you let it cool, you're going to cover it up with loosely dish towel. A dish towel that, of course, is one of your clean ones from the pantry, not from the bat laundry basket. You're going to let it cool now, get the steam out. Once the steam is gone, and cool to room temperature, you're going to cover it with a dish towel. Once you've covered it with the dish towel, you're going to put it in the refrigerator without saran wrapping it, without covering it sealed tight. You don't want to do that. You do that, you're going to have mush. Again, you're going to let it cool, get it to a room temperature, cover it loosely with the dish towel, put it in the refrigerator overnight, or if you've done this in the morning for a couple hours, like two I would do two to three hours, but usually what I do is I make the dough at night, let it rest, stick it in the fridge, and then the next night I make the cocretas, um, little forms of cocreta balls, and we will show you that in the next step. Ya no duele, porque al fin ya te encontré, hoy te miro.